Okay, welcome to this uh, Match Day Minus One press conference for Team USA. Um, if you have questions here for Defender John Brooks, please raise your hand. And we'll start with Stephen Goff. Hey, John, thanks for your time. What uh, you've been um, with this program for several years now. This is obviously a very young group. How would you describe uh, this bunch of up and coming players in the US program? Yeah, I think everybody can, can see it. We got a, a lot of talent in the group, a lot of young players playing at a high level. And uh, combining that, um, I think it's a very, very interesting group of players. Paul Tenorio, go ahead. Thanks, and, and thanks, John, for doing this. Um, I wonder your perspective. Serginio obviously brings so much to this team, and when he goes forward, he's very dangerous. He can create. But that does leave you guys a little bit more susceptible in transition because he pushes so high. What challenges does it present when you have a fullback that you want to get forward into the attack, and how do you balance that of, of, of wanting him up forward and, and knowing that it means – that maybe you're alone one-on-one -on -one sometimes in, in transition defense. Thank you. Yeah, hello. Um, no, that's what we want, want to see from him um, going forward, uh, create stuff, um, maybe get some shots uh, off by himself. And if you know that, um, we have to, to fill the spots uh, as a group. Uh, maybe it's me, maybe it's number six. Yeah, so yeah, we want him to go forward. So it's all good. Michelle Giannone. Thank you. Hi, John. Hi. On a final against a team very talented and that likes to attack like Mexico, how do you guys find the balance of trying to defend and then attack a team that is talented on all, on all of their lines? Thank you. Yeah, um, everybody knows that Mexico has a good team. Um, but we're a good team as well, and we try to play our game and not to focus that much uh, on Mexico. We try to push our game through, and um, yeah, that's what we want to do tomorrow. Okay, Ivis Galarza. Hey, John, thanks, uh, thanks for the time. Uh, uh, two quick questions for me. First, Mark McKenzie, uh, you guys ha had a real good partnership in the in the game against Honduras. Uh, what was that partnership like? How, how do you think he did? He seemed to really impress. And my second question is, against Honduras, you, you you guys, it got testy. There was a lot of, you know, testiness. It was a physical game. You expect that on Sunday against Mexico, another kind of emotional game and, and high intensity kind of, you know, we could see some of the same kind of stuff on Sunday. Thanks. Yeah, uh, the first question, um, the partnership with Mark McKenzie is, uh, I felt like we did a good job. It uh, was the first time playing playing uh, with each other, but I felt like we we match, uh, we had a good matchup. So uh, I felt comfortable. I think he felt comfortable. I think everybody else saw that we're like, we're a good uh, partnership. We had a good partnership and yeah, uh, games like Honduras, um, I think now everybody knows uh, from our young guys too uh, how CONCACAF is. Uh, every game is hard, every game is tough. And so it will be tomorrow also a tough game against Mexico. Okay, Jeff Carlisle, please. Thank you. Hi, John. Um, Hi. Obviously, you've got some considerable experience going up against CONCACAF opponents, you know, how much do you find yourself, you know, talking with, with some of the, the younger guys, even though, you know, some of them obviously play for very big clubs, you know, I mean, how much knowledge transfer is there? Well, like I said, um, I think um, talking about it is, is different than um, like playing, like actually playing uh, against teams like that. And, after the Honduras game now, I think everybody's uh, everybody knows how it is to play against teams like that. Um, it's never going to be easy. 
Uh, every every game is a battle, and so it was against Honduras. Um, but all that counts is that we won the game and we're in the final against Mexico now, and we are ready to go. Emily Olson, go ahead. Hi, John. Thanks so much for your time. This kind of follows up on both of those question. So on the broadcast, the Gucci uh, kind of highlighted one of your moments there against Lozano with, that was that was physical and called you Gooch 2.0. Um, as someone who is more experienced in this region, um, just your reaction to that kind of being bringing that fierceness to the team. Sorry, uh, can you ask again? <laughs> ask again. So being able to be the presence on the team that brings that fierceness, that um, that bite to the team. How do you, you know, react to that and, and being that guy uh, for this young group or at least showing them the way? Yeah, I try to help uh, every young guy um, to show them how, how you have to play against teams like that. It's not always beautiful. It's not always, always nice, but um, yeah, that's the way it works often. Brian Tolmich, go ahead. Hey, John, you know, obviously, as, as we were just saying, these games have confrontation, they have moments, they have frustration, and, and you've never been a guy that's shied away from that. You know, it seems like you've always kind of embraced that. But then you look at these young guys, and it seems like they kind of embrace it, too. You know, you like you look at Honduras and everybody's kind of jumping in for each other. And, and when there's a hard foul, everyone's jumping in and support each other. And it seems like some of these young guys kind of feed off that, that intensity, you know, is that kind of how it is? You know, how do you think that, you know, some of these younger guys are, are handling that sort of thing? Do you think they kind of, kind of thrive when it gets kind of testy like that? Yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, that's our group. Uh, we fight for each other. We're battle for each other. Uh, we stand up for each other, for each other. And uh, that's what we want to do. What we want to show. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and last question, Paul Tenorio. Thanks, John. You mentioned kind of this is how CONCACAF is, and you don't know until you're actually on the field against a team like that. I wonder when you're back in Germany, you're playing in the Bundesliga, do, do people ask you about what it's like to, to play in CONCACAF and how different it is? Are you able to explain, you know, why maybe a game against Honduras is a one nothing win? I'm sure some people expect USA to win 3 nothing, 4 nothing against these opponents. Um, can you explain to people, are you able to kind of tell them hey, it's not that easy? This, this is a different kind of type of game that you play in CONCACAF? Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, what I always have to do when I come back uh, from national national team. Um, no, they don't really get it. Um, for, for them, it's like, okay, Honduras is not like a big nation, not like big players, but still... Um, it's very hard, very, very hard to play against teams like that. Um, they fight for their lives. Um, they they chase you. They go after every ball. And, yeah, just to tell them that is like, yeah, they don't really get it. So they have to see it or maybe have to, maybe have to play in one of these games. Okay, we'll pick right back up again here with Coach Greg Berhalter. And... As is customary, we'll start with Stephen Goff. <laughs> he always gets the first question. Sometimes. Hey, Greg, um, so as a, as a fan, as a player, as a coach, um, you've had a lot of perspective on this rivalry. What, uh, how would you describe it? Wow, intense, intense. Um, you know, just thinking about all the times, you know, watching it and then participating in it, coaching it now. Um, you know, it's the, these games raised to a different level. And, um, you know, I think it's important our guys understand the heritage of, of the rivalry, understand, um, you know, what it means, um, and then embrace it. And then, you know, knowing that it's a final, knowing a trophy's on the line, but also that we're, we're playing, uh, you know, our fiercest competitor in, in the region. Charles Bohm, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Greg. I think the last time you guys played Mexico was the, the 3 0 um, after the Gold Cup in 2019. And if I recall that game, you, know, you guys you made a, a point to build out even under their press and kind of use it as a learning experience. I was wondering what your reflections are now looking back at that match, what you learned from it, how you might apply that tomorrow, whether you think this game will be comparable uh, to, to that last meeting. 
Yeah, it's a good question. You know, they, they certainly brought a lot of intensity that game for us. It was a, a, a good, um, you know, demonstration of how, how aggressive they can be pressing and also where the spaces are available for us. And, um, you know, that, that's probably the biggest takeaway um, in, in that game. But it's also, you know, different personnel now, um, you know, for us, it's, uh, you know, just collecting the, that information from that game was valuable, but also realizing that now, you know, we're a different team. It's going to be, you know, probably, probably eight different players on the field in the game. So, you know, any, anything can happen, but we're really looking forward to a final. And, um, you know, this is the third time we played Mexico um, and, you know, we want to get a win. Ivis Galarza, go ahead. Greg, I know it's been two years since the, the Gold Cup final. And as you said, just going to be a lot of different players that play on Sunday. But what did you learn from that game? Just having that kind of chance to be in a final and Weston and Christian had that chance to be in a final. And also you and Tata doing battle again. What did you learn from that game? And is it like a side note, you and Tata have had your battles. And now he comes out here in the semifinal and, and <laughs> tries out a three back. What, what about that chess match with you and Tata? Like, how much is that, uh, you know, do you enjoy that? Yeah, I, well, I think, first of all, about the, the Gold Cup final, what I realized, you know, from that is, you know, you need to finish your chances, right? And, and that's what finals are about. Finals are really tight games. You know, there's going to be moments where, where you suffer in the game. There's going to be moments that aren't going your way. And, um, and it's just about withstanding those moments. And then when you have opportunities, really taking advantage of that. And, you know, that was that was a back and forth game. You know, we had a lot of uh, chances early in the game um, and then a couple late in the game. But, you know, th I think that's the biggest takeaway in terms of, you know, Tata and myself. I, I have nothing but respect for him and what he does and how he coaches, um, you know, but also realizing that this game is about the players. And, um, you know, we got a fantastic group of players and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, see, to seeing how we're able to handle the, the magnitude of the final. Eduardo Lopez. Hello, Greg. How are you? Well, good afternoon. Um, do you think that um, Mexican team is uh, a better team than uh, the one you, you you play against in the final cup in, in 2000, uh, two years ago? Uh, how can you describe the Mexican uh, game game style? Uh, how he, how he, it has evolved during these last years. You know, I again, I think I was asked this, uh, you know, another time, and you know, I'm not in the position to evaluate, you know, Mexico year over year and and talk about their progress or their their um you know their evolution as a team. You know, I'm an, I'm here to analyze what I see now, what I see in this team, um, you know, that we're playing against tomorrow. And, and one thing I see is an experienced team, some quality um, in midfield, some dynamic movement in, up front um, and, and good goalkeeping. So we, we know that they have threats. We know that they're going to be a, a difficult team to break down. And we're looking forward to giving it a try tomorrow. Brian Tolmich, you're up. Hey, Greg. You know, you talked about it plenty after last game. And I think the, the general idea has been that's CONCACAF. You know, you look at at what goes on in these games and they're physical and they're combative and, and sometimes they're dirty and, and everything like that. And against Mexico, that goes to another level because the rivalry, because there's a trophy on the line, all of it. But it seems like your guys kind of know that line and they know how to feed off it. You know, you look at guys like Tyler and Weston have always kind of, you know, walked that line well and gotten into it. John's hopping into things. Geo tracked back a few times and gotten, to, gotten into the mix. You know, how do you feel you, your guys kind of feed off that? How do you feel like they kind of do with those intense moments? And, and what do you kind of expect from them when those moments inevitably pop up in this game? Well, you know, I was most pleased on Thursday with how we kept our poise. Um, you know, that, that was a, 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 um, a game that you could easily lose your patience, easily lose your poise. And we didn't do that. We hung in there. We stayed focused and, and we got a goal late in the game, you know, due to good, good movement behind the line, attacking the ball in the penalty box. So, um, you know, for us in, in this game, in the final, it's about rolling up your sleeves. And, and I talked before about how these games aren't easy games. You know, they're very, very difficult games. It's about moments in the finals. It's about, um, you know, being able to withstand pressure, but give pressure, you know, so there's a whole bunch of dynamics that are going on. And what we need to do as a group is just embrace those moments and respond to those moments. Um, 
you know, really step up in those situations and say, you know, we're, we're ready for this game. Jeff Carlisle, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Greg. Um, Thank you, Jeff. What can you tell me about the status of, of Tyler Adams? Um, you know, obviously, we haven't seen him either in Thursday's game or in the friendly against Switzerland. And, you know, how – obviously, it's a very different opponent in Mexico. You know, how much are you planning to kind of tweak things tactically, you know, given that, like I said, Mexico is just a completely different team? Yeah, you know, I think you know, for every for every opponent we play, we look for for ways that we feel we can hurt them. And um, you know, it, in in a final, I think it's it's more about you know trying to win the game. Um, it is different than um, you know than when we play them in a friendly in New York. Um, so you know, the objective for this group, you know, that we want nothing more than than to win this trophy, and that that's what we're going to be focused on. Regarding Tyler. Um, you know, he's recovered and, um, and ready to go. So for us, it's about, um, you know, making a decision on if he'll start the game or not. Paul Tenorio. Hey, Greg. Um, I'm going to do an homage to Ivis here with a, a dual question. <laughs> here we um, go. I love it. Uh, well, I love it. It, it, it kind of uh, goes off of that other question. But, you know, when you have a fullback, and full backs that go forward, but especially a fullback like Serginho, who's so dangerous in the attack, it does open some space and transition. And I wonder if there is a value to having a, a six like Tyler who can cover that ground and whether that, whether you look at, especially a team like Mexico, who can be so dangerous in transition, you know, playing a guy like Kellen or, or even Weston, who, who you know can cover a ton of ground defensively to try to, to try to cover that space. And, and then the second part is just very simply, you know, we haven't seen Eunice Musa start yet. He didn't play last game. And, and why, why is that? And what, um, what might his role be in the next couple of games? Thank you. Yeah. You know, last, last match was a difficult match and, you know, we held on to our subs, um, you know, and then, you know, we made them late that in, in an effort to try to win that game. And it was, it was a tactical decision why Eunice didn't play. You know, we think he's a quality player. Um, you know, we know Sebastian Leggett has goals and assists in him. He's proven that. So we didn't want to take him off. We know Weston is, is really good on, on set pieces, good in the air, still has a lot of that energy, um, you know, so we didn't take him off. And then, you know, we don't really see um, Eunice as the balancing player that like Kellen or, or Jackson. So, you know, it's one of those things, you know, it's one of those things where I wish we could have gotten him on, um, but we, we didn't. And um you know, he has a big future with us and, um, you know, he's a, he's a dynamic player and, you know, and hopefully we'll get to see more of them, but th that was, you know, specific for that game plan. To answer your first question, you know, it's, uh, of course, when you talk about a player like Tyler Adams, you know, you, you would have the tendency to say you want him on the field, but I think the deficiencies weren't, you know, weren't due to personnel. I think it was due to structure. I, I really do. When you, when you think about, um, you know, some of our attacks and, and some of our positioning and, and some of the movement, you know, led to us being unbalanced. And it's not just, um, you know, having Tyler in there is going to solve anything. It's we need to be better balanced as a team. You know, when Ser Serginho is attacking, we need to bounce with a midfielder fullback in and, and another and another midfielder. And, um, you know, the, the back line did a great job dealing with all those transitions. And um, but we can't rely on them all the time. We need to have better structure. Um, to avoid those plays. Sergio Venegas. Hi, thank you very much. This is Sergio Venegas, live from Mexico City for the Portrese. How are you doing today, coach? Good. How are you doing, Sergio? Excellent. Thank you for taking the time with us. Uh, knowing tomorrow you will be facing Mexico and the lack of opportunity from the national team of Mexico, what do you expect for the game of tomorrow? Because, Bob, well, sorry for my blocks. It's, you know, complicated. Sergio, what type of dog do you have? Two Labradors. I was going to say, I heard a nice, nice guttural bark there. It sounded yeah. like a big dog. Yeah, well, it's not too big, but those are my, my little boys like, okay. that, like that. Well, right. sorry. Sorry, let me make it once again for, for the question. Sorry for interruption. Once again, mm -hmm. for everybody. Uh, what is the plan for tomorrow? Because as you know, Mexico go through with true difficult uh, defeating Costa Rica on penalty kicks. And USA just get it into the end of the, the match with 89 minutes to scoring. 
So what is the plan of how do you expect for, for the game of tomorrow? And I wish you good luck. Thank you. You know, before the game, you know, before our game, I told you guys it was going to be a difficult game. Before the Mexico game, I, I, I said it was going to be a difficult game. These games are difficult, and it's just accepting that and dealing with it. You know, give, give Honduras and Costa Rica both a lot of credit. Um, you know, they, they played those games really well. And, we, you know, we know we can improve our game, and I'm sure Mexico would have moments where, where they'd want to improve as well. So for us, it's going into a final, realizing it's going to be a very tight game, Um, but embracing, it, you know, really enjoying the challenge of this game, enjoying the, the fact that we get to play our rival for, for a trophy, um, you know, is exciting. And we're really looking forward to the game. Okay. And our last question or two from Ivis Galarza. Only one, only one, I promise. A question wow. Ivis, yeah. what's happening? <laughs> uh, I'm getting old. It's, uh, I'm asking about Josh, Josh Sargent. Um, as a coach, how, how do you deal with uh, kind of working with a striker who comes off such a difficult season uh, for him. Obviously, the team gets relegated. They were pretty bad this year. He didn't get many chances. Obviously, he does so much work. And if you watch the Honduras game, you see that work he does. But is there, you know, it's in terms of confidence, in terms of maybe developing bad habits because he doesn't get chances and he drops back too much? Like, how do you work as a coach? How do you work with a striker who, who kind of comes off that kind of tough season? Just communication. You know, we know, you know, where we watch all his games, we evaluate all his games, we send him clips from his games, and it's just continuing to to communicate with him and talk to him about what we're looking for, what our expectations are in the way we play. And he's a smart player. He's a hardworking player. And, um, you know, his time will come. You know, he will he will start scoring goals. Um, you know, we need our forward to score goals. Uh, we love his work, uh, work rate. But, um, you know, along with that, we need goals. Um, you know, having said that, when you think about, you know, a pivotal play in the game is him, you know, heading that ball off the goal line that, that basically, um, you know, keeps the score at zero, zero. And that's a huge play. So, you know, he, he shows up at, at right moments and he, and he works hard and he's, he's a team player. So we're lucky to have him.